everyone. Thank you so much for coming. This is a great day for Bristol Community College. I'm Jack Spraga, and it's my honor and privilege to serve as president of this great institution. Uh, we're very proud of our uh, performance and uh, very proud to have the governor visit us and Secretary of Education uh, Malone visit us as well. Uh, we are uh, uh, most happy about this facility. Uh, we opened it last year, and uh, we call it the Green Center. Uh, uh, for the great workforce development work that we do here as well as uh, adult basic education and GED, all workforce preparation. Uh, those of you who may not know uh, this, there's a sad story connected with this building and it was the home of a thriving business, Quaker Fabric, uh, who had unfortunately uh, had to close and Bristol Community College started uh, uh, in this building uh, really with uh, workforce development and uh, 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 treating and working with the dislocated workers from Quaker uh, Fabric. And it was a, a community effort, the Chamber, the Career Center, the WIBS, everybody getting involved trying to help the dislocated workers. It was a heartbreaking story. Uh, uh, people, generations of people continue, uh, currently uh, three generations were working at the time in the, in the building and for generations previous. Not a word of English, not a grade of school, and it was uh, quite a, uh, an introduction to us uh, to uh, uh, take care of these dislocated workers. And uh, happily, uh, to some extent, we have some of them uh, placed and working with others. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a revitalization, and I want to uh, acknowledge Alan McCumber and Larry Kudo uh, here somewhere. There's Alan and Larry. Uh, for uh, and uh, Tony Cadero could not be here, uh, but the three owners uh, have really uh, done a great job for Bristol Community College. We're very grateful for all that you've done in allowing us to come here. We were burgeoning out of space at our other uh, Fall River campus. We also have such uh, locations in uh, Attleboro, Taunton, and New Bedford, uh, but uh, uh, at Fall River, we were bursting at the seams, and thanks to the governor's bond bill, we have a new building that's set to open, ground, break ground next year, and then open the year following. Uh, so I uh, thank you, uh, Governor, for that. Absolutely very proud of that. We need the space badly. And one of the reasons we need the space, I just a quick commercial for Bristol. Uh, in the last decade, we've increased our enrollments 80%, 80%, 80%. Um, uh, I always say uh, students are voting with their feet and they vote for affordability and quality and excellence. So 80% coming in. Uh, retention rate uh, in the last decade, uh, Bristol Community College has led the 15 community colleges in terms of retention. Uh, and so we're recruiting them, we're retaining them. Uh, we're also graduating them since uh, they are completing since 2008. Uh, Bristol Community College every year has graduated the most uh, degrees and certificates uh, in, in the state. Uh, and this year, I think we'll, uh, we had a new record of over 1,400 and uh, actually 1,444, easy number to remember, of graduations for this year. So we're very, uh, very proud of what we do, but we're not prouder of any, anything more than what we do for workforce development. And you're going to hear quite a uh, story that we have to tell. Uh, so I'm going to, before I start, I did want to ask the uh, chair of our board of trustees uh, to say a, a, a welcome. Uh, uh, Fernando Garcia, and also I want to recognize another trustee here, Deborah Kenny. Deborah, thank you for coming. Fernando Garcia, chair of our board of trustees. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you. Uh, forgive my injury, but uh, you know, at times, Governor, these college presidents are a little difficult. To, uh, <laughs> I want to welcome all of you, you know, t today because you are key cornerstones of the foundation that we have here in the South Coast, here at Bristol Community College, where our good president says, changing the world, learner by learner, which is key. I am delighted that one of the happiest things that I've ever done was the, the appointment that the governor was uh, gracious enough to bestow on me to lead this uh, board of trustees. We take our task very seriously because there's a great deal to do. I'm blessed to be with this, with this particular institution. We're aggressive. Uh, we just uh, signed some major agreements with uh, UMass. Uh, we are also uh, instituting some, uh, some classes with the new law school, expanding into the city of Taunton, where the mayor there and Senator Pacheco see what we've done 
in downtown New Bedford with UMass, which is Renaissance, create that critical mass of a student atmosphere there. So it's great. But above all, you know, it's the work that we do. You know, the unselfishness of all the administration, the staff here, and all of that. This past graduation, we had a, a young man that the governor had a lot to do with shaping his character, David Seamus. And he left me with a, a stand, and I believe some of you will remember that, but I know the author definitely would, will because he's here. It's Fernando, when I start my day, I always say, remember who you are and what you represent. And that's the task before us, is to provide education as the key to opportunity, to self enrichment for that second and third chance that people need, due to whatever economic, geographic, social situations they've never had to think. But education being the great equalizer, it's, it's, it's imperative of all of us to do our share to develop all those fine people. They deserve no less. And to use another quote from, from the governor, together we can achieve our goals. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Fernando. <clears throat> I did want to recognize Senator Mike Rodericks has joined us here. Senator Rodericks, thank you very much. And uh, I did want to say that, uh, you know, when, uh, before I leave uh, uh, the mic, I want to uh, congratulate the, the governor personally about his courageous step in uh, House One. That, that, that budget was uh, a path-breaking budget. It was unbelievable. It was very courageous of you. And uh, it is, uh, we have a saying at Bristol, we, uh, uh, we like to keep the, uh, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And that budget showed the main thing for our governor. And uh, I also want to say the, to Michael and the legislators, uh, thank you for your support for it. There may not be unanimity uh, uh, between the governor and the legislature about all things budget, but certainly there was uh, a common ground about all things education. And I'm very grateful to you for that. It made a huge difference for Bristol Community College. Uh, and uh, we're sta we stand to gain about probably more uh, through a new formula than uh, almost every other community college. And uh, as I say, the students vote with their feet, and uh, we've got to keep make sure that the services and the facilities are uh, catching up to their, their pathways as they move. And now it's my uh, pleasure to introduce to you someone just remarkable woman who had a long, distinguished career in, uh, uh, in the Senate, in the House, and in the Senate. And now, uh, I, uh, as soon as she announced that she was uh, not going to run again, I called her up immediately and asked her to come join us. And uh, she's uh, working as the Vice President for External Affairs, which includes workforce development, literacy, ABE, adult basic education work, as well as GED work. And it's my honor and a privilege to work with her and serve with her, sometimes serve for her. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it, it really has been a pleasure, and the place is much better because of her presence. And so uh, please welcome uh, Joan Menard. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, and my job is to keep us on schedule. Thank you, Jack. And by the way, everybody in this building knows none of this would have happened without Jack Sprager. Um, he is the catalyst. <laughs> He's the kindest, hardest working, um, Biggest slave driver I've ever met in my life. <laughs> but I thought I was going from uh, 14 hours a day to, I did. I went from 14 hours a day to 16 hours a day. So, uh, but thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. I can't recognize everybody here. But I would say um, everyone in this room has a part in making this successful. I'm going to briefly just go through um, what our mission is and what we've done. And uh, so if you look at the first slide, by the way, you all have copies of this um, at, at, that are available up here or you have in, your, in a little portfolio that's available for you. So uh, the Workforce Development Institute, this is our mission. Uh, we're committed to partnering, and I think that's a key word. We partner with every single person in this room with regional, national, international business and industry and job seekers to design state-of-the-art workforce solutions for our region and deliver high quality credentialed education and training programs designed to meet the needs of a global demand driven economy. 
And not only, by the way, I, not only is this woman working the machine, because that's something I never learned, Governor, <laughs> but she is the dean of workforce development. This is the human dynamo that makes this whole place work. And for those of you who know her, <laughs> Carmen Aguila. So she'll do, she does the work, I get the credit. <laughs> so um, this is a one stop for employers and job seekers. And one of our jobs, one of my jobs, has been to go out there and tell people about this. Because I went to many places and they'd say, we really didn't know you did that. Or we really didn't know that we could do this with a workforce training grant. Or we didn't know how to do it. You could do it in our business. And we have businesses here today that have actually worked, that we have actually written grants for that have participated in our program. So flexible, fast track options on the job training. We do the assessments, we, do, we write the grants. Uh, we provide the teachers, and we do dual enrollment at the Literacy Career Center, too. Um, one of our goals, of course, is to e continually expand our employer base. And that's why you see in this room the WIBs, the um, career centers, the chambers, the business community, they're all here. And the reason they're here is because that's our market. That's who has to sell our product for us. And to tell their members, you know, this is some, sometimes it's your money, it's the workforce training grant money, you should use it. Um, or we can write a grant for you and we can make it work. So this is what our job is. Enhance e-learning, of course, that's the new, the wave of the future. Everybody wants to do it on the computer. I have this little thing that I like person to person in addition to the computer, but that's me and I'm old fashioned. But, uh, um, we are bridging the skill gaps and the employers that are here today will be able to do, very briefly tell you exactly how that is. Diversify the workforce and, and most important, increase educational attainment levels. One of the things we do when we provide the training is to make people understand this is not the end. This is the beginning. We are here for you. You can now take this, get an associate degree, get another certificate, go on from that associate degree to get your baccalaureate and go on and on and on, as far as you want to go, but it's here for you. Um, these are connecting the dots. We have, of course, our academic services are here, communication and marketing, enrollments. We have all of these available, and these are our external partners, and I think this is a, a key a key piece of why we've been so successful. Employers, WIBs, career centers, chambers, professional agencies, community-based agencies. And um, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Carmen, and she's going to talk a little bit about. So today we have uh, the fortune to come with different employers who have the opportunity to partner and work together. And we um, are very interested for you to hear their own experiences. And we're gonna start with the financial sector. We did a program that is called a Just Right Management Development Training, and we're gonna invite the employer with the students who were part of this to tell you in 10 minutes the whole story. Here is the team. Thank you so much, Carmen, and thank you so much, Governor, for, for attending. It's uh, definitely a, an honor and a pleasure to have to have you here and to be invited to be part of this great, this great opportunity. Um, as Carmen spoke, we made a collaborative effort together to work with Bristol Community College. And as you can see up here, we named our training program the Just Right Management Training Program. And our slogan at Bay Coast Bank is just right, doing it just right for the community, doing it just right for everyone. And I couldn't think of a better organization to help us then with Bristol Community College, as being a fellow alumni of the college, um, Just Right is exactly what we did. It, we worked together. We created this training program, which was a six-month training program um, that we had 15 of our students come through. Here you see six of our students. And one of the things that we brought them here for today is because they're our customer service team. And Customer service is everything that our company is about. It's all about the customer and working together with BCC, with Carmen Aguilar, with Rob Vitello, and Jeffrey Davis, 
who was a phenomenal instructor. I'd have to say that I couldn't think of a better organization to work with, and we will continue to, to do more work with, with Bristol Community College. Um, we currently are writing a workforce training grant with them, so we can continue this great collaboration together. So I was just one of the instructors for it. I want to pass it over to our team members here for the customer service team. And um, we, we're going to have two speakers from the team to tell you a little bit about their experiences of the class and to tell you a little bit about the project that they worked on, the customer service project. So we have Ed Misholak, if you'd like to stand, Ed. And we have Paul Mello that will be representing the customer service team. Thank you once again. Good morning. My name is Paul Mello and I work for Bay Coast Bank. I participated in the Just Right training program. When asked to participate in this program, I was both concerned and encouraged. Concerned because I didn't know how I was going to fit this extra work into my work, into my daily routine. Encouraged because what I heard about the program, I know if done correctly, would have a chance to make a difference. This is a very good bank and place to work. It listens to its customers and employees. Yet something was missing. As with many organizations, not everyone shared the passion for a truly great customer service. I would speak about it when a situation would arise and try to do what was just right. I didn't know how to make everyone feel the passion for a truly great customer experience. From the first day of class, it was apparent that we were in for a change, both to ourselves and to those we work with and for. I knew that this would be that thing this organization needed to become truly great. Whether the day's lesson was effective performance management, successfully developing employee skills, or managing workforce change successfully, I knew everyone in the class would have the skills to reach the next level. Jeff was the right person to lead us in this mission. He was able to reach everyone in class, inspiring them to think and act in a way that was best for our development. Not everyone started in the same place, but we all ended up far and above what we thought we would. Since the class is wrapped up, I've used the skills taught in class to successfully affect positive change in an organization, once to assist the branches with a product for commercial customers, and once with my staff in the area of development. Yes, these things would probably would have gotten done, but I feel the skills I learned have them, made them help them happen quicker and with more ease. I'm now going to hand it off to Ed, who's going to speak about his experience. Good morning, and I have to admit, uh, just like Paul had said, I was very hesitant about getting involved in the class at first um, because I was stressed out by my workload already and worried about the extra work that was going to come from the training. Um, I liked the idea of the training. Uh, I was just worried about the work that was going to be added on. Uh, after some reassurances from Scott, and he may have lied just a little bit, uh, <laughs> I think I was the 14th out of the 15 people who ended up saying yes. Uh, but I'm very glad that I did that. In the end, the class helped me to figure out how to manage that workload more efficiently. The topics were such a help, including leadership and how to properly delegate tasks, to providing timely and positive employee feedback, and the importance of taking care of ourselves so that we can better lead and manage our work and also our own lives. From these topics, I was actually able to help relieve some of my workload, not add on to it. Our instructor, Jeff, did an excellent job. He had a plan and an agenda, but he took the time to learn what was really important for our group. And we had no problem being, and we were not very shy in letting him know what our thoughts were about that. But that was because he had created a level of trust within the group that allowed us uh, to freely share and to be open with him. He tailored the topics that he covered to our and our organization's agenda and our needs, and he spent extra time in the areas that were of particular concern to us. Because of the atmosphere, we not only learned important things about leading and managing, we also learned important things about ourselves, and the entire group got to know each other better and to grow to closer, especially in our work on project teams. As part of the management training, the 15 participants were ad divided into three different teams. And the company itself is trying to go through a whole synergy process, as Scott had mentioned earlier, and upper management's a meeting for quite some time on this. So from that process, various projects and tasks have come out and emerged that they wanted to be worked on. So it was a natural fit to have management training classes get involved in these projects. The project that our team was assigned, or really all of us chose, was the customer service slash problem resolution project. Our upper management champion was Anne Ramis Derosier, and she heads the Bacos Bank's retail group. So first we met and we just gathered information amongst ourselves about what we thought was great customer service. We looked inside our organization, we looked outside at other organizations, and then we met with stakeholders that would be impacted by us. And finally at the costs for their various proposals that would be made. 
We met frequently as a group, but not too often. But our instructor, Jeff, was also instrumental in helping to guide us through that entire project process, which was very important. In the end, we presented our findings on both aspects of our project. For problem resolution, we split it into two parts. We looked at it from the customer level, and we also looked at it from the company level. We presented five steps to each of those levels that will help us to deal with customer issues and to empower our employees throughout the organization to do what is just right for our customers. And then came the greater task. How do we infuse customer service into every level of our organization? What if we had a way to give customer service a focal point and to keep it top of mind for every employee? And from these questions came our recommendation, which Paul will now go through. Our mission statement is to provide exceptional customer service and solutions to our community. What good is an organization if it had great products and services, yet lacked a truly great customer experience? We thought, we have all these banking committees that work on important matters, the ALCO committee, auditing committee, compliance committee, several of which have board involvement. Isn't customer service as important as these? Our recommendation was to establish an internal customer service committee. The purpose of this committee was to provide ongoing participation in customer service improvements, promote dialogue and exchange of information regarding key customer service issues, aid the staff in providing cons consultation and advice concerning customer service, assist in advising on policy issues regarding the customer's interest, and serve as a sounding board. It's a strong possibility that none of this would have happened without the involvement of Jeff Davis and BCC. We want to thank them both for their leadership. Thank you for allowing us to make this presentation, and we're glad to entertain any questions you may have. And when you talk about commitment uh, from the president level all the way to the higher level of managers, this is a great example of a company. And they've been doing amazing. And we've been learning a lot of things as well with them. What are the needs? How can we better respond to them? How can we better train our, our instructors to respond as well? So it has been a great, great partnership in both sides as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here. Actually, they were hand selected folks from the organization for this first I don't know if they were able to cover all the areas because we were all from different parts of the department of the show. I don't think our party can address the Biden and the fall party now. So they wanted to make sure that they were cross section. So the idea was you were meant to work through so that everybody went to the So to some extent, you were figuring it out. And Governor, this was a training program that was actually done on site. So Bristol Community College came out to our main campus in Swansea, and they did it right on site. And um, once again, it was, it was just phenomenal. What we wanted to do, um, as part of our organization, one of our key goals for 2013 is to create synergy, synergy within the organization. And because we are comprised of three separate organizations, Bay Coast Bank, Plymouth Investment Advisors, and a partner's insurance group, we needed to get a collaboration. And not only that, in banking, you, you have so many different departments in the organization. And it's really tough um, for everybody to know what each, each other is doing. So we wanted to start off with this training class as the synergy mindset, breaking down silos and keeping those solutions together. So when we handpicked everyone from the organization, we wanted to see some of our top management prospects here, because this was a pilot program that we put together. From this program, out of the six individuals you see here and the rest of the individuals that comprise of the 15, we want to hear their opinions. We want to get the most vocal individuals so we can make this program as best that we can as possible. And as we're speaking today, um, myself and Jeff Davis have already set aside meetings where we're sitting together and we're comprising the information from this workforce um, collaboration and how, how can we make it better? So the pilot class did a phenomenal job. We're so proud of them. And um, we look forward to continuing this relationship 
so the rest of our organization can really strive from this program. Thank you so much, Ho. Um, there are so many people here that I don't want to miss, but a part of all of this coming together was our relationship with, and I want to introduce Rob Mellion from the Fall River Chamber. I think there is someone here from the New Bedford Chamber. The uh, career centers have been an integral part of our relationship. We actually have people that are going to each career center and talking to the counselors, talking to the people that come in. Um, and so it really works. That's part of my job, to go everywhere and to make sure they understand what we have to offer. Because lots of the employers, and I think the people from the uh, Bristol County WIB are here, and, and part of, and, and the New Bedford WIB also, um, part of the, the, the problem has always been the employers don't realize what's, what's out there. And so that's our job. So. Perfect, thank you so much. The next uh, part of the program is to talk about advanced manufacturing efforts. And we've been very lucky to have extremely great partners. And today we have uh, CEOs and students who participate in classes in advanced manufacturing. And I'm gonna pass the microphone to Robert Vitello, who's our Director for Corporate Services, who's gonna introduce the guests. Thanks so much for uh, being here today. Uh, I am the Director of Corporate Services under Carmen Aguiar. And as you just heard, we work with employers to upgrade the skill of employees to improve performance and meet the changing demands of the workplace. Uh, within manufacturing, we've been very busy. So we're implementing two advanced manufacturing consortium projects in New Bedford, which you'll hear about next. We also have a new machining training that's focused on lean tools here in, New Bed uh, here in Fall River, thanks to Tom Pereira and his staff at the, at the WIB. And uh, also to meeting the needs of, uh, for workplace ESOL to boost the performance of limited English speaking workers and position them for promotion. Every day we work with employers to assess training needs, to design customized training, and to write the grants to help support their investment in training. So in addition to the employers you're here, uh, going to hear speak, we have folks from um, Aravox, North Atlantic Corpor Corporation, Matuk, and others present today as evidence of our partnership. So I'm uh, happy to introduce David Slutz, President and CEO of Precise, to talk about his experience. Good morning. Thank you. Well, the good news for you is I have no pre-prepared words since Carmen came by at 4 o'clock Friday. Hey, you're on Monday morning, Dave. No problem. So, <laughs> Some good news uh, for everybody, including the governor. You came through the day before the last election, my plant. Our headcount was 295. We're now 352. So, yeah. And worth noting, too, is uh, we didn't just put our employees to the training. I went through it, too. This team, this team development stuff, if you will, and also lean manufacturing is important for all of us. And also, from a headcount standpoint, it's worth noting, when Haskon Aerospace closed a couple of years in Taunton, we got some of their employees, including Marcy, who's with me. She's now my sales and marketing manager. She was in HR, so we taught her how to be a sales and marketing person, and this training helped get us there. So this is important. We have several Haskon employees, including Marcy. But what I'm going to talk about briefly is, on this training front, we, our ratio right now is about one to 25 uh, supervisors to employees. We really have self-directed work teams. What our last training was helped us figure out who we are, what we want to be when we grow up, and also team development. And this trainer, her name was Joni, was exceptional. And she kept it intrig intriguing, very enlightened for uh, two weeks. We all went through, including myself, we all learned something with it, including the fact that, for example, my sales and marketing director is a different personality type than me, so I know how to approach Marcy in a better way and vice versa. So <laughs> that definitely helps us get along because the one thing you know in any corporation is you don't want to have all the same type of people. So with this training, we figured out who we are and how we can work better together. So it was very, very exciting. On top of that, on the lean manufacturing side, all of our folks are going through that, and we have more people volunteering for training than we can actually have spaces for. So, But BCC has been a wonderful partner, always has been, and we pick up the phone to call Carmen, Jack or Joan, they're always there for us. So, is it Norm's turn? Yes. Okay. Marcy, you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> right. Thanks. Here you go, Norm. Good morning. Um, my
My name is Norm Sorrell, and I'm Lean Manufacturing Director at Dabico Manufacturing in New Bedford, Mass. We are an advanced manufacturer of aftermarket catalytic converters for major auto, auto parts suppliers nationwide. We currently have 50 employees. We are excited to be a partner in the Advanced Manufacturing Consortium training grant along with Precise and four other partners. Our workers have participated in some of the lean fundamental training like team-oriented problem solving this spring and summer. This will help prepare them for the fall when we launch our customized advanced lean process improvement training. Ultimately, this training will sharpen the skills of our work workers and give them the tools to be more productive and boost quality. This will allow us to be more competitive and grow our business here in Southeastern Mass. Thank you. Just wanted to uh, add, you know, I had this short thing. I was, uh, I, I can do better than Dave. I was on the beach in uh, East, East Ham when my boss called me, um, the owner of the company, Ray Supernaut, and told me I was speaking this morning. <laughs> this was uh, Friday. <laughs> so um, just wanted to say we, you know, uh, we had some people go through the training and they came back and they were just unbelievably revitalized and um, asking why and solving problems, you know, the five whys and uh, getting to the root cause analysis and was extremely beneficial. And I'm really excited about the next phase that we're going to be going through. And I'm very thankful that we're involved in it. So next, I'm happy to introduce Michael uh, McNeely, CEO of Accutech Packaging. Good morning. I'm Mike Keneally. I'm with Accutech. We're a manufacturer in Foxborough, Massachusetts. We also have a facility in Mansfield. And uh, as a manufacturer, we're focused on providing packaging solutions for our clients. We're a manufacturer of plastic thermoforming, folding cartons, specialty envelopes, packaging machinery, and we also distribute packaging materials. It's a fast-paced, demanding business that requires all of our people to be committed to producing the highest quality products. And we need to be innovative and responsive to our customers. Earlier this year, we launched the Workforce Training Fund Program Grant which includes workforce ESOL classes delivered by Bristol Community College. Since January, we've had 10 employees attending classes four hours a day, four hours, two days a week, customized English training, which is focused on their work tasks. Our employees are learning workforce vocabulary and have a better understanding of how their tasks fit with the overall organization. They're more confident and getting better at asking for clarification when they don't totally understand what their supervisors want them to do. It's improving teamwork and their ability to effectively participate in other process improvement programs that we'll be doing through the Workforce Training Grant Program. We expect that their increased language proficiency will help Accutech improve quality and efficiency and will allow workers to boost their, pers their performance, ultimately resulting in higher wages and promotion opportunities that they would not have without this training. We are pleased with our partnership with Bristol Community College and their expertise they bring in these classes. Deb Beaton has done a terrific job working with our employees. They were all excited to go to class every week. We've had 100% attendance since we started the program. We have begun level two ESOL training and that will also, will also have a level three class in 2014. It's a big commitment for Accutech in terms of lost production hours and wages, but it's well worth it. We overlap first and second shifts, so actually we, we're adding hours each week, so we have committed workers that will stay extra time, but frankly it involves overtime hours, but we're totally committed to making that happen. I would like to thank Governor Patrick and the Commonwealth Corporation for being so supportive of programs like this to improve, improve Massachusetts manufacturing. We would welcome any one of, any one of you to visit us at Accutech in the future to see what we're doing with this program grant and other things that we're doing in our manufacturing processes. Fortunately, we've been able to, it's modest, but add about five to 10 employees every year for the last five years. At this point, I'd like to introduce one of our associates who's a star performer in the ESOL training classes, 
Laura Martinez has worked for Accutech for 12 years. Laura would like to share her thoughts on what the classes have meant to her. Laura. Good morning. Uh, my name is Laura Martinez. I work in, a, in quality control at Accutech. My job is approve the jobs, um, introduce the information in the computer, and watch the, the thing runs. Um, I could take being a me um, good opportunity to learn English. Uh, that helped me in the work because some jobs um, sometimes have new instruction and before I, I don't understand and now I understand better and help me in my, in my house too because I can help and my daughters in her own work. And I have a good teacher. When I don't understand something, she uses different things for we understand. So I could take a, bring a good opportunity for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, before, before we go any further, the lady standing right in the back with the blonde hair is responsible for all our ESOL and adult basic education and uh, Bernie Driscoll. And we have classes that obviously are running in Attleboro, in Taunton, in New Bedford, and in Fall River all the time. Um, so thank you, Bernie, for your work. You have really, exa really great examples today of businesses um, uh, whose workers are, um, uh, are becoming more productive, more engaged, more motivated, I think it's also fair to say as a result of the experience that, um, that they've had in the workforce training that you are partnering with them on. I'm interested in what you're thinking about in terms of tracking this over time, because I think what you'll see, and a couple of you have alluded to it, is that as the productivity of the um, workers goes up, the competitiveness of the enterprise improves, and the opportunity to add more people because business is, is expanding um, also follows. I think that's what you're seeing, and or certainly what we're what we're hoping hoping. So I'm interested in, in whether you have in place mechanisms to track over time, so we can come back in a few years and see is are we getting as big an uptake as we want? Are there adjustments we should we should make? What do we learn as we go forward? What we're doing is uh, in several of the projects is, is workforce training fund. And it's part of the tracking process of Workforce Training Fund program to track some of the things that you just mentioned. So it's part of the process itself. But also internally for BCC, we need to understand also the skip gaps between today and at the end and the six months and then a year or two. So what we're trying to do now is to try to develop those tracking systems and improve the current ones that we have. So we know if we're making a difference what is the impact in the time, and what is the improvement over the time. So we're working on that uh, with you know, all the whole comprehensive uh, workforce team here, and we're hoping by a few months we have a more robust system to continue tracking it. Yeah, uh, the transformation agenda, the federal grant that we received, required us to do that, required us to go back, actually, which was a little difficult to go back three or four years and see what had happened to all of the, uh, the people who graduated from our programs. Um, and I, I think the, one of the other important things is that we're trying to, this is an educational institution all, primarily, is to encourage everyone that goes through all of our programs that, hey, you can do this. Um, people, a lot of these folks don't imagine themselves as being college students. Some of them have never been to school, and they, you know, especially in the ESOL uh, area. And we're encouraging them to come in, take a class, see how it works, um, and continue to get an associate degree, because that makes them even more qualified. That's true. That's true. But we are trying to track that. We are trying to track who does do. And Mary Ann is, is our grant writer, and she has formed a, a tracking mechanism where we can track the academic also, as well as the work standards. Any more questions? Thank you. 
less supervision, more ownership at the drug level, and worry about that. Yeah, that definitely works. Uh, I just want to thank the uh, gentleman from the, um, all of you, but the gentleman, my name is Matt Malone, I'm the Secretary of Education. The gentleman from the uh, packaging company. Uh, the value, I'm assuming, that you've taken on the cost of educating your employees English, from what she just said about being able to help her kids at home, that, to me, is probably the most powerful thing I've heard today, because really what you've invested in is the generational responsibility of our country, the future, that those children of your employees will have a better chance now because their parents can help them at home. And we're finding that that correlation between what happens at home and happens in school and the breakdown in language at times is a barrier. You're providing that on a small scale, and I salute you for it, so thank you. We are going to uh, take the tour of the governor to walk him through the different classrooms with the students. And for all of those who de uh, desire to stay, you're welcome to enjoy the goodies. Uh, and thank you so much for coming today.